2,400 miles plus to get here. You didn't drive, did you? Heck no. <laughs> Heck no. Slept intermittently on the plane. Nice. That's about it. So it's going to be recorded, played back this afternoon. Okay, um, do I need so to speak into one of these? Either one. It's all okay. you. Ooh, not that one. No, that's good. That's good. That's good. As long as it's on. It says it's on. There it is. All right. All right, cool. Cool, cool, cool. All the hits, Q97, Danny Solis, live from WWE Access. We're in New Jersey and live and direct. We have had a bona fide, certified, unfortunately, I have to say, former WWE champion, but the best in the world, CM Punk, <laughs> yes. live in the studio. A little bit of revenge right there, I think. For those of you who don't know, uh, when I was interviewing AJ, CM Punk came up behind her, uh, kicked her right in the chair. AJ literally just came, kicked CM Punk back. That's, uh, yeah, that's called instant karma. That's right, that's right. At least there's no GTS involved in either of those kicks. No, 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 no. She, would, she would kick my ass. <laughs> nice. All right, well, number one, I, when, I, when I introduce myself to you right now, I introduce you to Danny Solis. With someone like CM Punk, I totally have to stop myself from saying, nice to meet you, Mr. Punk. Mr. Punk. People kind call of, you Mr. Kind of Punk? A, kind right? of a, a contradiction, isn't it? No, a lot of, I get that a lot, oddly enough. You don't gotta, do, you don't gotta say Mr. Punk. That's crazy. What do people usually, what do people usually call you? Punk. Punk? Yeah. And you're cool with that? Absolutely. Dynamite. So I see you're wearing Beats by Dre right now. Before yes. we get into whole everything happening in WWE, what are you bumping? What's what's uh, currently coming out of your head? Uh, currently uh, a band called Off With Your Heads. All right. Well, being that uh, I'm the... Probably not even on right now. Yeah. Yep, off with their see. heads. Hold the, hold the mic up. Hold the mic up to that one. It's good okay. stuff. And I will say... Uh, oh, there I am right there. Look how yeah. horrible I look. <laughs> nah, look cool. <laughs> I will say with 100% certainty, that'll probably be the last time you hear that song on Q97. I'm positive. Right? But you should all go check out Off With Their Heads. They're a great band. All right. Man, Hornswoggle is out here um, selling MGK. You're out here selling Off With Their Heads. Hornswoggle the sucks. <laughs> God, he sucks. <laughs> Good, I'm glad you said it. I didn't have to. <laughs> All right, well, hey, I gotta say, number one, just as a as a fan, every time CM Punk is on my TV, on WWE TV. Change the channel? Hell no, I don't change the channel, man. And just, like I said, as a fan, you bring something to the table that is, it's compelling. Like, I don't want to change the channel. Like, you need, people need to hear what's going to come out next in CM Punk's mouth. And that is Appreciate something it. that is freaking ridiculous. Oh, well, that's what I'm trying to do. Right? Yeah. So, huge match with Undertaker. Huge. Obviously. Yeah. WrestleMania this Sunday. So, Undertaker undefeated, obviously, at WrestleMania. CM Punk, the best in the world. Not just this world, but every world. Yeah. Best in the world. What can you bring to this Undertaker match that no one else in the past 20 years has done. I uh, have the, I, I, I have absolutely no remorse. I'm a despicable human being. I'll do whatever I have to do to win. Totally. And nobody else has ever even attempted that. I'm not bound um, by any any specific moral code. I will I will step over the line. I will blow up the line. I, I don't care. I will cross it. I will you know I will win. Dude, well, I'm glad you brought that up as far as pushing the envelope, crossing lines, breaking barriers. The famous CM Punk promo where he dropped that pipe bomb so many years back, that was the one that people were talking about. The next day, they were talking about for weeks after that. Yeah. How much of that was straight off the cuff? How much of that was just floating around your head? How much of that was just totally something that you wanted to get out? Oh, that was 100% all of it. I, I just kind of vomited how I felt over the past like three years out and uh, that, you know, the world saw it. Man, I think that was unbelievable. And you being not the not the hugest guy in stature in WWE, you kind of feel like you kind of set the standard or kind of opened the door for kind of the smaller guys to kind of break to the, to the main event level. Like no, you have. I don't think so. I think I think uh, you know predominantly the the guys who have been able to wrestle have always kind of uh, made their way to the top. You know, Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart. Um, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm right up there size-wise with them, you know what I mean? Uh, and if, if I knocked down any doors, it was um, from indie wrestling to here. Uh, and I think hopefully I, I, I kind of paved some road, you know, and, and made it a little bit easier for, for a guy like, uh, you know, Daniel Bryan or Antonio Cesaro, you know, Evan Bourne. Uh, guys like that to, to come up here and hopefully maybe change uh, attitudes about uh, indie wrestling. Right, right. Well, coming up in the indies, what, was it always in the back of your head like, man, I'm, I'm seeing so few indie wrestlers making it to WWE. Did you kind of have that doubt? Like, man, maybe 
Ring of Honor is going to be the pinnacle of my career? No, not really. Uh, but I knew that I knew what they liked, and I knew I wasn't exactly it. So I knew I just I just had to be different. All right. So what did you do? What did you do? Kind of. Obviously, you came out when you first showed up on WWE TV. You didn't win every match instantly. You weren't an instant hit, an instant headliner. So right. what did you do to kind of stand out? Uh, well, I, I mean, I think I look different than everybody. Right. You know what I mean? And I act different than everybody. I'm just, I, I, the whole package is just different. The way I wrestle, the way I talk, the way I look, the way I carry myself. All right. Uh, everything, everything's different, you know? And, and, and if you if you work hard and you're good at what you do, and, you know, nothing, nothing, you can't deny talent. That's it. Cream rises to the top. That's what they say, right? Absolutely. Dynamite. And I, I know, obviously, you've gotten this a whole lot, the comparisons to CM Punk on TV, um, to Stone Cold Steve Austin of yesteryear. Right. Basically, that's Stone Cold. That's that's the Steve Austin you're going to meet on the street, just kind of amplified in the ring. And that's kind of you, because you, you live the lifestyle. Obviously, you're straight edge. And that's not just CM Punk. That's that's CM Punk off TV, too. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, that's just not, it's not, a, it's not just for TV shows. That's not character. That's me. That's dynamite. Is that is that something that you kind of consciously thought, well, man, this is going to be the something that sets me apart from everybody else? I think man. so. Yeah, because uh, I mean, uh, uh, it was it's a huge part of who I am, you uh -huh. know. So yeah, I, I think uh, I think when you're real, I think people see that. And I'm not trying to be like a, an astronaut on TV, and people can, you know, there, there's nothing to, to see through. It's like what you see is what you get, and I think the people can appreciate that. That's cool. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up too. Obviously, not being a hero, but 2013 WWE is a whole hell of a lot different than the 80s, the 90s WWE. Yep. So you being the quote unquote bad guy, the heel up on TV, dude, that doesn't prevent people from cheering the hell out of you when you come out or when you're right. walking through airports, I'm sure people are like, oh my God, I freaking love you CM Punk. Yeah. Like, is that, how does that make you feel? Like you want to be, and you are the most hated dude on TV, but is that, does that necessarily correlate to like fans? You want to be hated by the fans? Off of TV. I think I am in a lot of cases. I mean, you'd be surprised at some of the, the interactions I have with, with people on the street and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, uh, the, the fans are fans. They can boo or cheer for whoever they want. So I, I'm not, you know, I don't get salty about it. What are some of the craziest things that the fans have done to you kind of off TV in the parking lot, airports? I, well, everybody's got a big mouth when, you know, there's a fence in between the two, uh, you know. But, uh, um, I, you know, I... Off the top of my head, I can't even really think of a decent one right now. And, you know, a lot of the really, really good ones I, I can't really talk about. <laughs> right? You know, right? There's no for, YouTube videos for of that. For fear of litigation. Gotcha. You know? Way to keep it clean. Yeah. <laughs> right, tight. So, obviously, I'm going to say, and I keep saying obviously, but I'm just assuming that wrestling... The Undertaker at Wrestle Freaking Mania is one of the major highlights of your, or going to be one of the major highlights of your well, career. Well, boy, I hope so. You know, I hope I don't just uh, have a really bad night. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it's definitely uh, it's definitely on paper it looks to be a career highlight. Yeah, because uh, you've got to have a lot of pressure because it's not just about winning or losing when you're wrestling with Undertaker. It's about one upping his match against Triple H. It's about, it's about, one about upping, performing. I, right? I think I think at WrestleMania, regardless of who you wrestle, I think it's about performing your best. So yeah, I mean that, that's that's the pressure. So it doesn't matter to me if it, it was Undertaker from Zack Ryder or Hornswoggle. Right. Right. You know what I mean? Like I got to be the best. Actually, I, I think I do remember you beating the hell out of Hornswoggle on TV. Okay. You should see what I do in the line backstage. It's horrible. I hate. I hate him. I hate Hornswoggle so much. It's a lot to. Hate. Well, actually, there's not a lot to hate about that. There there is. That See how, see how big he is? Yeah. Jesus I don't think Mark Henry could be a pick now. Right? It's a super heavyweight. Yeah, a super he, really, he really is. He's as tall as he is wide. <laughs> nice. Well, I know you got limited time because you got a crap load of radio interviews to do this morning, but we got to talk about some predictions. So CM Punk, Undertaker, your prediction is CM Punk comes out of here. 100%. So, <laughs> WWE. Take, take it to the bank. I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now. Uh, WWE title, Cena, Rock, no matter what happens in the CM Punk Undertaker match, I'm quite certain you got your eyes up on that title. Of course. Uh, I think John Boy's got it. Think so? Yeah. Was that your prediction last year, too? Uh, for the I, same I, can't, I can't even remember yesterday, let alone last year. <laughs> so, tight. moving on. All right, tight. So, WWE definitely on your, uh, or WWE title definitely on your to-do list after, after WrestleMania. Always. Of course. Always. Cool. 
Do you have any plans to uh, change the belt, the belt logo like The Rock did? Um, I, I, I'd like to think that I changed that thing. I just kind of held on to it until he showed up. Nice. Yeah. Adam, Adam Boy. CM Punk, as a fan, I appreciate your time and continue to kick ass in WWE, man. I appreciate everything that you've done in the ring. And I will do my best. Right? Thank you. Thank you. CM Punk, live WWE Access. Nice.